Jeeves. Who ever laughed at Leonardo da Vinci's comic novels? This man can do all that stuff and still have enough left over to write musicals, star in movies, and stage the greatest disappearing act since Shergar. He was gone with the wind, now he's back with a vengeance. Let us give thanks and say welcome home to Stephen Fry. Welcome back, soldier. What have you been up to? <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Um, hiding my head in shame, Clive. Um, and uh, writing a novel, actually. I'm, I'm finishing one at the moment, yeah. which is very tedious. It's about your third one, isn't it? You're, it is my third so novel, yes. So yeah. productive. What, uh, they're very productive in Hungary. What do you think of our Hungarian folktale? Now, you be jolly careful about this. Uh, as it happens, my grandfather was an Hungarian. Oh, really? Yeah. A Mojar. And um, Hungarians are... They're different, as you know. The language is different. It's not based on Indo-European languages in the way all the others are, from Polish to uh, Irish or whatever. Um, and so they, they have a different outlook. I, I think my grandfather was used to say, a Hungarian is the only man who can follow someone into a revolving door and come out first. <laughs> and, uh, they, they do have qualities. And uh, he used to talk about the Hungarian cookbook, where the entry for an omelette said, um, first steal an egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they do actually Hungarian does contain my favorite favorite word in the world because Hungarians are very demonstrative uh, you know they'll kiss friends in the street you know um, darling you know all the time like that well they think of the Gabors for goodness sake yes. uh, kiss or slap is, is one or the other <laughs> and uh, there's this if you know someone very well you're said to be pussy pytush with them it means they're a kissing friend so I would say to my grandfather you know do you know so and so he said well I know him but we're not exactly pussy pytush which would mean he wouldn't kiss him if he saw him in the street. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? Now, it we is. don't have a word like that, do no, we? No, they're obviously a very warm and, and spiritual people. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I think in the Hungarian folk tale that we saw, I, I got the sense they were all on psychedelic drugs of some kind. Were <laughs> <laughs> you always involved? Yeah. Well, no, what happens, um, it's easy to laugh, obviously, um, but what happens is they get sort of second, fourth, fifth-hand video equipment that um, Look East, say, in Norwich, has sold on. Uh, and, you know, in 1972, that was the bee's knees. <laughs> in fact, there's a rather sweet story, which I might just bore you with, which is probably untransmissible, uh, about the, the, the great actress Irene Handel. You remember Irene Handel? Very well. Wonderful, great, wonderful. Very funny woman. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. And she was doing a play in about 1972, and they got very excited with this technology, which, which was called CSO, Colour Separation Overlay. And the, the director decided to explain this to Irene Handel, who was, you know, getting on a little, and uh, said, <laughs> now, Irene, it's, it's actually very straightforward. We're using this technique called CSO, or Colour Separation Overlay, uh, or Chroma Key, you may know it as. Basically, what happens is the colour blue is used as the chroma colour here, the key colour. Um, you'll be acting, uh, and anything that's blue, and she said, excuse me, dear, I think you're confusing me with an actress who gives a f <laughs> 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 oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I thought the Hungarian narrator was very good, considering his limitations, didn't you? Yes, I, uh, that, wishing to be again personally, he didn't, didn't sound that unlike you, in a strange sort of way. <laughs> he had that rather sort of, you know, you know commentary way of speaking. You know, you almost expect him to go, you know, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I, like I, do. I do that, do yeah, I? Well, yeah. just a, uh, Yes. <laughs> I guess I do. You ever been dubbed in a foreign language? Yes, I have actually. I mean, it's just occasionally when one's on a holiday, you see, you know, Jeeves and Worcester in, uh, in France or something, and it's a little alarming. Generally speaking, they, they sort of get it more or less right in, in, in sort of character. Um, though I was rather alarmed to see uh, at the time, and it was my, simply my favourite programme, Dallas in Italy, where they kind of rather lost the point of JR. I mean, what made JR such a great villain was his, his lightness of touch. You know, that kind of, you know, um, you're a loser, Barnes. You know, you'll never be. You know, that kind of... You go buy yourself something real pretty now, you hear? All that kind of That's stuff. That's very you know? good. Well, thank you. Nice good. Good. And um, it's kind of light, witty style that, that Larry Hagman had. And, and you watch it in Italy, and J.R. is right down here at the time. You know, <laughs> bye-bee, bye-bee. Like this, you know. And <laughs> you, you, it's so obvious, it just ruins the effect. It becomes like a pantomime, you know. Bye-bee, 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 bye-b
Klinger. Yes, Corporal Klinger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He was the one who wanted to get out of the army, right? Yes, and mm -hmm. so dressed up in, in women's clothes in order, yeah. to, <laughs> in order to be declared unfit. And stayed in for the entire run of the series, which yeah. was about seven times longer than the Korean War. Yeah. <laughs> do, you think, uh, do you think Loretta Swit was better as a redhead than she once was as a blonde? Oh, that was Loretta Sweet. Yes. Oh, I thought it was one of those before and after photographs of Cher, and it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was no need for that. That's uh, very ungallant of I'm you. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, no, she was charming. Of course, she yes. was charming. You see, I mean, this is the trouble with your program. You get people on, and somehow <laughs> you sucker us into being incredibly rude about very nice people. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to be rude about you, and it just glances off doesn't it? because you're such well, a teddy bear. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of those? What do you think of those breakthrough American products? we showed. Well, it was difficult because after the halo hair one, I was so busy vomiting, it was difficult <laughs> to take them out. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, let's, you know, I love America. Yeah. This is, you know, I, I have a sure. place there in New York and I, I really, really love America. I love Americans. Yeah. I love so many things about but America. But that being said. But, yeah, there is no question that high maintenance Hollywood hair <laughs> is something, I believe that's the phrase she used, is something I can do. I've never understood this big hair business. And I don't understand why Americans... Yeah. Are, are, I'm, see, I'm going up in pitch, yeah, I'm I, so excited. I've never, <laughs> I've never understood the big hair thing either. It's, uh, Americans, uh, just thinking of those products in, 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 in general, uh, Americans are really innovative, don't you think? Innovative. 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 Yeah. Hard to say. But I didn't know that meant stupid. <laughs> Americans are stupid, but, but when it comes to inventions, oh dearie me, it is extraordinary. Well, you know, there are people out there <laughs> dying, and somebody is making a fingernail dryer. <laughs> no? You haven't lived until you've smelled what the aroma's limb smells like. You want to sniff? Ooh. Yeah, have a give it a try. Ooh. And this, this is an appetite. Mm. Now, why, why am I getting Kenneth Clark? <laughs> That's extraordinary. Some of us will do almost anything to, 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 uh, to get slim, you know, except, I suppose, stop eating. Did you ever hear Peter Cook on the subject of Elizabeth Taylor, which was joyous? Uh, there was a time when, when poor Miss Taylor um, had blown up, rather. Mm. Oh, she will, you know. And someone had put out that it wasn't her fault, it was her glands. Oh, right. And Peter Cook said, yes, I know, poor woman, there she is, sitting in Claridge's in her suite, calmly watching television, innocent as you please, and suddenly her glands pick up the telephone and order four dozen eclairs <laughs> and two bottles of brandy. And in they come, and Miss Taylor's going, no, no, take away her glands, are stuffy and down her throat. <laughs> and she runs in the bathroom and shuts it all by her glands, sh smash down the bathroom. It's just so cruel, but I'm afraid so accurate. <laughs> I do wonder. You've been a big, a big star for a while now, but I've never seen you in Hello! magazine. Have you ever considered that? <laughs> I, I was offered, in fact, uh, uh, what I thought was an unfeasibly large sum of money to appear at home in Hello! magazine, which I did regretfully decline, but it occurred to me afterwards that it was such a lot of money that what I could have done, which would have been rather enjoyable, and perhaps, well, perhaps I'll try it next time, is you could actually, I thought, I could, I could rent a large house, a remote yeah. house in the country. Do it up. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. have all the walls painted black. Yeah. And, and when the Hello! people came along in their jolly, jolly way, I would, you know, and I'd have my hair probably dyed white, like Andy Warhol or something, and I'd wear a black polo neck, and I'd stand like this, and I'd go, hello. <laughs> and then I'd go, and Riffy, my houseboy, would come, you know, with sort of sheep's eyes and things like that. So, shall we go in here? We'd go into a room which is all black, with strange manacled things hanging on the walls. I call this my punishment room. <laughs> you could do the whole thing, and they would just be forced to do it, you know. Actor Stephen Fry's bright, breezy, very personal punishment room. It's, uh, it's great to welcome you here. Right. Thank you very much. Stephen Fry. Yes. And now, on the eve of her 